What's going on guys, No Guides here, welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to go over my productivity and my gaming setup that I've been working on for a couple of years. It isn't the most cleanest of setups, um, but the most important thing I value is efficiency. So it won't be the most cleanest setup, but all the links will be down below in the description for all the products. Now before we go into the actual desk setup, the most important thing of any setup and probably the most underlooked is the chair. This is the Ergo Chair 2 by Autonomous. If you're going to be sitting in a chair for 12 to 18 hours a day, 365 days a year, you need to make sure your chair is comfortable. Now I wanted a chair that was very, very adjustable and the Ergo Chair 2 does offer that. There's many parts of the chair you can of course adjust. We do have the headrest. The headrest can be tilted either forward or backwards depending on your seating position. And of course you can also increase or decrease the height of the headrest to adjust your, your needs. In terms of the back, you can of course recline the chair back of course and you do have an actual additional feature that you don't see that often which is you can adjust the back tilt tension which essentially allows you to adjust how much pressure you apply to the back of your chair. Of course, the more you increase the tension, the more or less likely should I say it is to basically recline. Um, you do have a special lever on the side as well that allows you to just recline just a little bit. So let's say for example, you wanna sit in an upright position, but sometimes you want the seat just to give away, just to sit back and relax. You can of course adjust that. And one of my most favorite features above all, which is one of the main things of this chair is actually lumbar support. Um, you have adjustable lumbar support where you can move this up and down. For those of you that don't know, I do live with back pain, extremely bad back pain, I have done for many years of my life. Um, and also one other feature you do have is the seat tilt and depth. So you don't see that common that very often, um, but you can also adjust the tilt of the seat. And of course the depth of the seat can be more forward or more backwards. You have the typical height adjustments that you would have normally in all other chairs. And in terms of the armrest, you can actually lock the armrest either at an elevated position or you can decrease it. The only, probably the only downside to this armrest is you can't actually remove it. I wish you could remove the armrest and probably one other thing as well on the side is that the armrest doesn't really lock in place, it does move around. But apart from that, it's one chair that I would recommend, especially if you do suffer with back pain. There's two places where you spend most of your life and that is your chair and that is your bed. Never ever compromise on those two things, especially if you suffer with back pain, just like I do. Now moving on to the desk, um, the desk is one question I get asked a lot as well. Um, what desk is it? Um, it's a basically an Ikea Malm desk. I don't know if you can get it around the world, but you can get in the UK. Um, I got the color white and it's very affordable, um, just under 100 pounds. 140 centimeters by 65 centimeters. So 140 centimeters wide by 65 centimeters. So it's really good for housing a lot of stuff, a lot of technology like I have or to, or put, to put a three monitor set up anyway. And I got my PC in the background. It does come with a cable management bar, but I'll be honest, my cable management is not too good anyway. And of course it does come with two drawers. It's a very affordable desk, but very much in a long term. I ideally want to get a good high quality desk because this one's a bit hollow. Um, so I want to get one where I can actually put a clamp at the back for a monitor stand so I get more real estate on my desk and of course I would like a sit stand desk as well because it's much better for my health. Um, moving over to the microphone so on the front of the desk clamped I have a microphone boom and connected to that I do have the Blue Yeti microphone a very good microphone that I use for all my voiceovers for recording this video the voiceover for this one and for all my meetings, conferences, Zoom calls. So if you want a general all-purpose microphone, a USB microphone, I would recommend the Blue Yeti microphone. Got a mute button on it. It's a very good microphone and it's pretty affordable as well. Um, in terms of the microphone itself, I do have a pop filter on it. It doesn't come with the microphone, um, but I will leave a link down below in the description. Um, but it's the kind of more of a minimal microphone pop filter, which just looks a bit better compared to most. Um, in terms of the desk itself, so we're going to go from right to left, starting on the right hand side. I just got an RGB light, um, basically to came over lights, obviously to add a bit of character. It's normally seen in my windowsill on my streams, um, but just for, this, just for the aesthetics, just for this video, should I say, I put it on my desk and a big gamer deep down inside for sure. Um, in terms of the desk itself, so the main two things I have is two mouse pads. Um, the first one is the regular wide mouse pad, it's very clean minimal um, it's a basically a pure black mouse pad 
benefit of this is no obnoxious and massive designs or anything really 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 standing out it's clean and minimal you can use this for both your mouse and your keyboard i use it for just my keyboard on my left i normally put my phone there or sometimes i might have my tea there a cup of tea on a coaster or most of the time my headphones um, on the right hand side i do have a corsair rgb um, it's called the MM800C. Um, I got this with the keyboard. That's the only reason why I got it. You don't need an RGB mouse pad, but I got it with a discount when I bought the keyboard at the same time. And of course, top of the mouse pad, um, I do have a Logitech G403, which I think is actually a really, really good mouse. It's good for FPS games. Um, it's quite a light mouse. So if you do get wrist pain, you want a light mouse, I would recommend it because that's what I do. Um, do get in terms of pain and it's quite good and I got I got fairly big hands anyway well fairly, fairly big hands compared to the average person so I definitely recommend the G403 and it's pretty affordable compared to other masters as well to the left we do have the Corsair K95 keyboard it has Cherry MX Silvers it's a bit overkill um, before I had a very cheap mechanical keyboard um, but I had really bad wrist pain and I just wanted the lowest actuation force um, and I would highly suggest a mechanical keyboard I had like a 20 pound one before I used for like seven years. So if you haven't got a mechanical keyboard, I'll suggest just getting a very cheap one. Um, it honestly is really game changing, especially if you have wrist pain and you want to do quick, fast touch typing and you type around 140 words per minute like I do, it does really make a big, big difference. On the left hand side of my keyboard, I have my headphones most of the time. Um, I'm using the Audio-Technica M40Xs, they're quite neutral as opposed to the more expensive M50Xs which are more bass heavy which are probably more popular as well. Um, I use these and I have the Brainwaves ear pads on them that make it very comfortable and if you're wearing headphones for 12 plus hours a day you want to ensure that your headphones are comfortable so I would recommend that. Um, connected to that I do have a DAC which is a Fio E10K. Um, I think there's a newer one out um, but this is a basic digital audio converter. Um, if you're really into music, I would recommend the DAC. It really does make a difference when you're listening to music in general. And my both, of course, the PlayStation and the Xbox controllers. I need them both because it's my job. And obviously, that's the only reason why I would have it. Otherwise, I just have the PS4 anyway. Um, to the right-hand side of that, um, I do have my Stream Deck. I use this mainly for streaming, but I also use it for editing, um, for like putting hotkeys and macros and scripts also to the Stream Deck. So if you're all about efficiency, I would recommend that. Um, into the main part, which is the triple monitor setup, I do have a Ron House. I think I say you say triple, triple monitor setup. There's two. There's the one that clamps to your desk, and then you have the desk mount like this one. Now on the monitor mount, I have three monitors, and I have an eye track underneath. You might be thinking this is overkill, but there's a reason why I'll explain in a second. The two monitors on the side are AOC cheap monitors, um, and I recommend getting it from Amazon Marketplace. That's why I did for my second one. Um, the one in the middle is my main monitor. It's a Samsung 27 inch. It's a curved gaming monitor and it's 1440p, 144 hertz, but only the middle one. Um, I would suggest looking into monitors properly. I only bought this monitor in all honesty because of the Black Friday deal. I think someone gave it back. It was less than 60% off. It was cheaper than a 1080p, 144 hertz. So I went and I just bought it. I got extremely lucky. It was a bit of a joke, to be honest, to say no. Um, so I got that and now this is the thing if you have a PS5 now look at this on the screen This is not just me everyone else having issues with this if you have a PS5 You can't play 1080p or 144 Hertz on a monitor if it doesn't support HDMI 2.1 from what I know so for example my one is 144 Hertz 1440p, but I can't play PS5 1440p 144 hertz because ps5 doesn't support 2k then you would think okay if it can't support 2k at least you can play 1080p 144 hertz but i can't so can you imagine on this monitor i can only pay play should i say 1080p 60 fps it's an absolute joke on the xbox it's fine on the xbox i can play 1440p 120 hertz on the pc i can play 1440p 144 hertz that's not an issue but just on a ps5 i'm stuck to 1080p 60 fps so even if you see a monitor on sale that's 1080p 144 hertz there is a big chance it won't work on ps5 and this is just ps5 xbox doesn't have the issue and of course pc doesn't have that issue it's an absolute joke but that's why i say research before you buy a tv and Above my three monitors, I do have a TV. It's a Samsung TV. It's not 4K. It's like it's an old 1080p TV, I think, uh, with that I 
bought when I was at university. Gets the job done, um, but now 4K TVs are much more affordable. I'm just going to wait for HDMI 2.1 to come out so I can just kind of kill two birds with one stone and get maybe a higher refresh rate and a 4K TV. Um, in terms of the uh, that's your camera, should I say, if you're streaming or if you're just doing Zoom calls or conference calls, um, I'd recommend the actual webcam. This is C920. It's a very affordable webcam, 1080p. Very, very good. You can use it for streaming, as I said, and Zoom calls. I'd highly recommend that. Um, I have my PC and my PlayStation to the side on the left-hand side. And I, of course, have my terrible internet connection that I'm hoping um, to upgrade in the near future. And then on the right-hand side, behind my monitor, I do have my PC. Um, this is just an old PC that I built at university. It's probably a bit overkill for most things. I want to upgrade it even more, though, um, just because, obviously, with my job, um, I just want to have no delay, no lag. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a quick overview of my setup. And obviously, people ask me about my chair and even my desk and in particular the screen. So that's why I focus more on those things and everything else. In case you're wondering, the links are down below in the description. Um, and don't forget, I do have a tech channel. Well, I want to start a tech channel, Nil Tech. Um, the link will be down below in the description as well. And I'd be very much glad um, if you want to come check that out and even if you want to subscribe to that channel. But boys... Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Have a wonderful evening and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.